Okay, to finish up spinal cord, we're going to do two things. First, we're gonna review the three long pathways. their courses through the uh, spinal cord. And then we are going to use that, uh, that knowledge to look at three iconic lesions. Okay, so first for the review. There are three pathways that we're talking about. The first one that we're gonna think about is the lumniscal pathway, also called the dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway. And this is a pathway that is gonna carry light touch, vibration, proprioception, information from uh, these modalities, from the, the saddle region, the back of the legs, the bottom of the feet, will come in in sacral levels and come into the dorsal columns. Uh, they'll come into the most medial aspect of the dorsal columns, so the dorsal columns are gonna grow from the medial aspect outward, laterally. And then as you get to lumbar levels, where you get the waist, the hips, the front of the legs, top of the feet, that information is gonna come in lateral to the information from the sacral dermatomes. It's gonna rise up also in the dorsal columns. And then thoracic information comes in lateral still. Information from the mid thoracic and below, mid thoracic lumbar sacral is gonna form this medial fasciculus, the fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus gracilis, carrying light touch vibration proprioception from the ipsilateral side from the trunk down, mid trunk down. Upper trunk and cervical levels, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, that's all gonna come in to the more lateral aspect of the dorsal column and form the fasciculus cuneatus. Importantly, 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 this pathway, light touch vibration proprioception in the spinal cord, it is all ipsilateral to the parts of the body that it serves. Okay, ipsilateral, 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 great. Now we're gonna go on to the spinothalamic uh, pathway, also known as the anterior lateral in more clinical speak. And this is a uh, pathway that carries information about pain and temperature, crude touch, sensual touch, um, and it is going to, uh, the information of, of these modalities comes in at every single level and synapses onto a dorsal horn neuron in the, in the very superficial dorsal horn in, in an area called the marginal zone. And that dorsal horn neuron is then gonna send an axon across. It crosses in the ventral commissure that uh, is just below the central canal. So this axon crosses in the ventral commissure, comes over to this ventrolateral funiculus chimney, and then turns to go rostrally. And so this information is just gonna uh, go rostrally. There is a somatotopy in the uh, spinothalamic tract, but it's not one that we care about. It's a pretty small tract, and, uh, and there, it's very unlikely that you'll get um, a lesion of one area, not the other. So all this information is traveling up contralateral to the part of the body that it serves, and there's one exception. So below the level of the segment, below, the dermatomes below the level of the segment are all gonna, that information's all gonna travel contralaterally. But at the level of the segment, what happens is that the information is crossing, and so there's a vulnerability of information from both sides, anywhere in this middle region. A lesion anywhere in this middle region will block not only information from the ipsilateral side, but also from the, from, from, not only from this side, but also from this side, because they cross in the middle. Okay, great. And now the final pathway is not a sensory pathway, it's a motor pathway, it's the corticospinal pathway, and that is a pretty simple one. And in this case, what we're talking about is the outflow from the pyramids that controls fine muscles of the, of the, uh, of the limbs and predominantly of the distal limbs. And so the lateral corticospinal tract, that's what we're talking about. Remember that the corticospinal tract divides into uh, the lateral corticospinal tract, that's about 90%. And then about 10% continues on as the ventral corticospinal tract. The lateral corticospinal tract crosses in the, at the junction between the medulla and the, and the uh, 
spinal cord. So it crosses so that it's opposite from the side of the, of the cortex that it originated from, but it's now in the spinal cord, it's ipsilateral to the part of the body that it is gonna provide motor innervation to, or it's gonna provide motor innervation to the motor neurons that provide uh, innervation to the muscles. So this, this, spinal, uh, this corticospinal tract is gonna come down here and synapse on motor neurons in the cervical cord that serve the arms and hands, and also in the lumbosacral cord that serve the legs and feet. The corticospinal tract is not gonna terminate in the thoracic cord because it, we do not have individually uh, controlled, uh, the ability to individually control muscles in the trunk. So the corticospinal tract is a limb tract. It is predominantly distal, so there's a lot of control over the fingers, a lot of control over the wrists, less of the uh, more proximal joints. And this travels in the dorsolateral funiculus and it terminates um, in the uh, lateral part of the ventral horn. And so the important thing here for a spinal cord lesion is that all the corticospinal pathway uh, is always, it, the lateral corticospinal pathway is always ipsilateral to the muscles that it ultimately influences, ipsilateral. So we have light touch, vibration, proprioception, ipsilateral, pain and temperature, contralateral with one little wrinkle at the level of the dermatome, at the level of the segment, and then the corticospinal tract motor information is also ipsilateral, the same as light, light touch, vibration, proprioception. Great, now you have a, a total review, you should be all familiar, and now we're gonna use that to um, understand the consequences of some iconic lesions.